Sunday, everybody. It is the Soaking Wet Kelly with if you have an egg.com and it is Sunday, October the 11th and Karen and I walked in the rain tonight. So sorry about the hat and the wet hair. My shirt has just about dried out. So that's good news. Um, hopefully we will have comments tonight. Last week, don't know why Facebook was not cooperating. Um, don't think I changed anything, but it's changed. I don't know. Facebook keeps changing, so I guess they think it's good. It's really irritating me. But anyway, hello and happy Sunday. And yay! There's Debbie. There's Orlando Debbie. So yes, so comments are working tonight. That is awesome and amazing. Um, I'll be saying hi and hello to everyone that I can catch. Hello, Irma. I would love it if you would say hello. I would love it if you all would chat with each other. If you are brand new, please do let us know because we would love to welcome you. Hello, Linda from Rock Island, Illinois. Um, but we would love to say hello. We would love to welcome you. Hello, Sandra from Demons Ferry. And yeah, and welcome each other. So we have a great time when we're here. If you, hello, Lynn, it's the second time I've seen you today. So if you, and Orlando Debbie, it's the second time I've seen you. So if you all um, are watching this later on YouTube, and it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg. If you don't want to say hi and hello, again, ridiculousness, but just go ahead and grab that scroll button and go on over to about 10 minutes because that's when it dies down. Hello, Carol Lou. Um, but you really should. You really should go ahead and say hi and hello. Hello, Trish. And hello, Barbara. Hello, Deborah. And so it's good to see everybody. Um, it is what has been a rainy, rainy weekend here in Knoxville. Hello, Mary Ann. And Karen and I walked in the rain. So anyway, sorry, I'm still wet. Like my hat. Hello, Kathy. Second time I've seen you today. My hat is like still soaking wet. My hair pretty wet. Um, but anyway, shirt has dried out, so feeling feeling pretty good, not freezing inside of here in Hello Kim. But we are having um, a pretty good day here in Knoxville. Um, for everyone who's been um, curious, hello Michelle. John's dad is a tiny bit better. He's still in ICU. Hello Sylvia. Thank you all for sending your well wishes and especially your prayers. Um, he is a tiny bit better. He's still in the ICU. Um, hello Lisa. He um, had to take Lasix yesterday and they got off three liters of fluid. Liters. So, yeah, liters. That's a lot. That's a lot of fluid. And hello, Lisa. Hello, Deborah. Um, but since they took off the fluid, hello, Judy. He um, is more awake today and has pulled out his feeding tube, taken off his uh, blood pressure cuff, and is trying to get out of bed. So apparently the ICU nurse is thrilled with him, but we're thrilled though that he's, you know, a little, it's a tiny bit better. It's a little bit of an improvement. So we will take it. Hello, Shantae. Hello, uh, Alicia says it's raining there too. Um, oh, and Orlando Debbie got her koozies today and she said they were wonderful, awesome. I forgot to use mine tonight because I had a different water bottle. Hello, Tabitha. And hello, Jessica is here and she will be helping us with some links that we'll need to attach, um, that we will need to attach to a little, a little bit later. Hello, Mary. Uh, Marlene says, yeah, I rain in Baltimore. So I think we're getting the tail end of, like, I don't think it's the end of it, but I think we're getting the tail end of, is it Hurricane Delta? I don't know. I can't even keep up. We've had John's mom and dad like 24 hours a day for the last, we think, 13 days. Tomorrow will be 14 days. Hello, Evie. And thank you, Sandra. Yep, Alicia. Hello, uh, Kelly from South Dakota. Awesome. Hello, Susie. Hello, MJ. Yeah, MJ had a, ooh, had a lightning storm last night. Yeah, no thank you on the lightning. Hello, Rosie. But yes, we have had John's mom and dad 24 hours a day for the last 13 days. It'll be 14 days tomorrow. Um, so John's doing most of the work, so y'all keep him in your prayers. Hello, Kathy. Um, oh, and I didn't even realize that Lynn said that today is Thanksgiving um, for our Canadian friends. Happy Thanksgiving, Canadian friends. That is awesome. I didn't even realize it. Like, I, like we have not paid attention to anything. Today was a break today. Like, that was a break today for me to get to come in and um, do this and get our chat notes ready. But I think the people that I saw at our 2.30 meeting, hello, Marina, I saw you today. I did get to go to the 2.30 uh, meeting for Knoxville today. So it's for the West Knoxville group. You don't have to be in West, West Knoxville. Hello, Becky. You do not have to be in West Knoxville to join that group. Yeah, Susie, Susie says you look darling. Okay, I look wet. I look soaking wet. So my hat is still, yeah, it's still soaking wet. So my hair is wet. And thank you, Kelly. My, my hair is wet. Anyway, so, okay. But so Knoxville group, you do not have to be in Knoxville to go to it. It is for um, the 2.30 Zoom. And that is with Gwen, with the lovely Gwen. Hello, Sherry. Um, but we had a good time today. Uh, there weren't a ton of us there. Hello, Marlene. Open Barbara's koozies are on the way, but I did see, and I'm, if I miss anybody, let me know. Hello, Patricia, or I'm sorry, hello, Patsy. Um, and let me know if you, if I missed anybody. Um, so I saw Trisha, Myrna, that's why I said Trisha a second ago. Trisha, Myrna, and hello, Linda. Trisha, Myrna, Donna, Sandy with a Y, Sandy with an I, and hello, Sandy again. 
um, Kathy, Debbie, Lynn, Barbara, Roberta, Trish, and Kristen. So I think I got every, I think I got everybody. That's everybody that I could see anyway that was on um, that was on the Zoom meeting today for Knoxville. Um, and again, just a couple of quick notes. Hello, Kathy from Stewart, Florida. So just a couple of quick notes. Y'all are gonna get tired of me saying this, but I will not be saying this anymore after November. So you only have to listen to me say it for like another month and a half. The extended free lifetime benefits are good through the end of November. So they quit, they quit um, going, you know, they quit saying, okay, 30 more days, 30 more days, 30 more days. So it is extended um, for 30 days. I mean, it's 30 days. So it's extended until November the 30th. And, um, but you have to weigh in sometime between November the 1st and November the 30th. So you have to weigh in at some point during that 30 days, um, to, you know, to, to continue to receive your benefits. So just keep that in mind and don't say that you didn't know, because I've already been talking about it for a couple of weeks and I'll be talking about it for another month and a half. Um, if you're in East Tennessee, we do have those wellness check-ins in Maryville, Oak Ridge, Powell, and the Cedar Bluff main location. And, um, you know, so we um, do not have any news yet on in-person workshops so i know many of you have in-person workshops hello stacy we don't have them yet so i'm super excited i keep doing the survey at the end um at the end of every workshop hoping that the way i answer the questions on the survey is going to affect it somehow i don't know if it will or not but i am super super anxious to go back to the in-person workshops i love the zoom workshops i will still be doing those i'll still be doing the virtual workshops because i love being able to pop in and especially to see people from other parts of the country but i need my in-person workshop so enough about that and do not forget if you are still wanting a simple living products um air fryer hello lisa if you're still wanting a simple living products air fryer they are you can still get 10 percent off hello loretta um, if you go to simplelivingproducts.com and use our code EGG10, it's just E-G-G-1-0. -E so EGG10, you will get 10% off at checkout. Okay, this is Weight Watchers chat number 194, and it is titled Create a Plant-Powered Menu. So I did not get to, hello Katie. So I did not get to attend last week's Zoom meeting um, because of all this going on with John's mom and dad. So of course... Of course, last week's Zoom meeting was the one where we talked about plant-based things. So, you know, all of the all of the thing all of the things that I've been talking about for the last how many how many years, you know, that my mom taught us. And um, oh, I mean, Sherry already got her air fryer, yay! Um, and hello, Kathy. So, yeah, all the plant-based things that I've talked about, you know, because of my mom, whose birthday was yesterday, by the way. She would have been 82 years old. Um, so yeah, so happy birthday, mom. Um, I miss you. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to start talking about that or I'll get upset. Anyway, so I missed the plant-based one. How did I miss the plant-based chat? But we've got to make up for it today. So we're going to talk about that today as chat number 184, create a plant-powered menu. So we're going to be talking about all things plant-based here in just a little bit. But first, I want to know who attended a Zoom meeting last week. So who attended either, hello, Teresa, who attended either a... Um, a sit-in workshop so you got to go to an actual physical locate you know like location and sit your bottom in a chair so who got to do that give me a thumbs up and if you're brand new first of all let us know that you're brand new so we can welcome you but you've got a little button down there at the bottom with a thumb if you attended a workshop last week or if you attended um, a physical workshop or if you attended a zoom workshop last week for WW give me a thumbs up and if you attended here with us live last week give me a heart or you can do a heart for both if you want to I see lots of hearts and thumbs ups. Marlene says me. Barbara's got a thumbs up. Loretta's all hearts. Oh, Lynn's both. Lynn's thumbs ups and hearts. Yep. Yep. Oh, and Linda got to sit her bottom in a chair. I'm super jealous. So bravo to everyone who either attended. Oh, and Trish's both. Sandra's both. But bravo to everyone who either got to go to a physical workshop or got to sit their bottom. Got to sit their bottom in a chair at a physical workshop, attended a Zoom workshop, a virtual workshop, or you attended here with us, or you watched on replay. So congratulations, everybody. Here are your Bravo stickers. And if you would like to get your own Bravo stickers that you can print out, those are available on ifyouhaveanegg.com. Hello, Sandy. And I know that... Um, uh, Jessica will post that. She will post the link for that here in just a second. But you can print those out. So you can print them. You can cut them out. You can print them out on stickers. You can make it the background for a sheet of paper. You can do whatever you want to with it. Um, but you can print out those um, Bravo stickers. So last week, 
in chat number 193. So last week was chat number 193, and it was titled A Good Night's Sleep. Um, so, phew, that seemed to have hit home for a lot of people. Oh, hold on a second. Let's see. John, it must be on Casey's phone because it's showing up as me, as if you have an egg. And he says, it's John, hello, from the Bohannon home base. So, John has made it across the street to Casey's house. Um, they, we tried to wear his mom out today, and we tried to wear Alyssa out today. So, hopefully, both of them are actually going to sleep because they've not been sleeping a whole lot. But, hello, John. Hello, Lacey. Oh, and everybody's saying hi to John. And there's the link to the stickers. Okay. So, last week, though, was chat number 193, a good night's sleep. So, good thing John's here with you because he can tell you what happens when you don't have a good night's sleep. Um, but it seemed to kind of hit a note with several of you. So, I had been taking um, the sleep topics for granted. Um, we talk about it every single year. Every single year, um, it is one of the WW topics. And I always kind of roll my eyes and think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell me how to lose weight. You know, I don't really need to know how to... Um, I don't really need to know how to, um, you know, what, what's involved with sleeping. You know, just tell me how to lose weight. But let me say, after this last couple of weeks, it is so important. So I take this subject very seriously now. Um, in the second half of our chat last week, we talked about um, caregivers and caregiving and how important it is for them um, to find a way to rest. Um, so John's dad is still in the ICU. This is day 13 tomorrow. Tomorrow, not in the ICU. He's been in the hospital for 13 days lost track of how many days it's been. Hello, Angela. Um, I've lost uh, track of how many days that it's been for uh, in, you know, in the ICU. But, um, but tomorrow will be the 14th day in the hospital. Um, just because he hid, uh, you know, the level of John's mom's situation um, from us. He did a great job of hiding it from us. And then he would not accept much help of, you know, any unless we kind of forced it on him after that. So sleep, let me tell you, sleep deprivation is serious. So John has found out in the last couple of weeks how little his mom sleeps, um, how much she gets up, how much she, how much attention she needs. So, so sleep, I mean, th sleep deprivation is real. I mean, otherwise, hello Vicky, otherwise people would not, you know, they would not use it in other countries for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, um, you know, as a method of torture. Um, so, I mean, you know, Seriously, you know, during war, even not during war, you know, whatever, they have used sleep depri deprivation as a form of torture to get people to talk, to get them to betray their families and their countries, to get them just to literally crumble. So not getting enough sleep is a serious thing. Um, I mean, and that's what caused John's dad's, um, you know, his, his illness. So, so don't take this topic lightly. So last week, your homework was to identify some of those sleep roadblocks. So what are some of the things that are keeping you from either getting enough sleep or from staying asleep? Um, and so a lot of y'all did your homework. So even though sleep has been one of those <laughs> topics for me over the years, I took it seriously this week. Y'all took it seriously this week. So for your homework, it was to identify some of those roadblocks and then to um, you know tell us how you were either, how were you going to bust through that roadblock. So let's see how you did. And it was hashtag no roadblocks. That was your homework. That was your hashtag for your homework last week. And Casey made you all another yet again another super cute badge um, to give out. I think I got everybody, but let me know if I missed you because again we've been spending a lot of time you know taking care of uh, parents. This week, so that was your homework was to find out what roadblocks you were having. And Barbara said for her hashtag no roadblocks. Um, hello, Barbara from the crossroads. She said, um, uh, so a, a different Barbara said her hashtag no roadblocks was. She says I have to try to put my iPhone or iPad off, off, or if it needs to be charged, charge them. So on Tuesday night, she put lavender oil on her feet. And she, and she diffused the lavender, so she put it on her feet, too, and she diffused it. So, I want to know why on the feet. So, tell us, other Barbara, tell us why on, on the feet. I need to know about that. But she diffused it as well, and she said her goal was to um, have at least three nights that she was in bed by 10 to 10.30. And she has done that every night, and so she's waiting to see if she gets a blue dot for that, for her sleep. Because she's tracking her sleep, too, in her WW app. That's a good one, Barbara. But I do want to know about the lavender on the feet. I'm very interested to hear what that is. And then Katie's no roadblocks is she's put her phone away when she got home from the group from the group home and she makes sure that she in, she's in bed from by 1145. And she tried the alphabet trick. She tried the alphabet trick when her cat woke her up early and she said it worked like a charm and she went right back to sleep. So 
Katie's kitty cat. You need to leave her alone. Let her get some good rest, but I know how cats can be. And then Susie says that her bedtime roadblock is hot flashes. So fortunately, I'm about done with that. But she said um, it's, it's her hot flashes. They're, they're waking her up. But her plan for busting through that roadblock um, and heading right back to sleepy time, she opened her her Calm app and listened to a sleep story. I thought that was a great idea. And hello, Mindy, I did not see you today. But she said she opened her Calm app and li listened to a sleep story. And she's been practicing that all this week. She's been practicing um, the A to Z thing and, the, and listening to the sleep story. Um, and it's worked like a charm. She said it has worked like a charm. So bravo, everybody. Oop, and Vicky said she did the alphabet trick and two times it worked for her. I'm telling you, it has been working for me. So everybody that did your homework and the ladies that I mentioned tonight, congratulations. Here are more Bravo stickers. If you did your homework, you get a super cool badge that Casey has been making for us. So, um, yeah, so you can keep collecting those. So we may try to make them in a format where y'all can print them at some point, but right now we're just, you know, we're just, just keep swimming. That's all we can do this week. Okay. So, this week because we do have a lot to talk about and i have a ton to talk about in the second half so for this week um we are um talking about plant-based food so this week is to create a plant-powered menu um and this week in your weekly and um, we explore the world of plants and how they can give give you um and your weight and your weight loss plant power so how you can get power from plants so um my mom used a vegan diet to not only prove her doctors wrong so her doctors years ago her doctors had told her um that she had some irreversible kidney and liver um problems and um she had let's see she was diabetic and she had some other things going on and just from you know years of smoking and not eating so well and not taking care of herself her doctors were really telling her that she had some conditions that were irreversible so not only did she prove them wrong um, when she became vegan, you know, and completely switched to all, you know, plant-based. Um, but she proved them wrong, but she reversed many of those health issues. And, you know, and she was very successful at it for many, 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 many years. So she made it, you know, um, a, lot, a lot longer. You know, she made it to 82 and her, or 81, and her doctors were, um, her doctors all kept saying that she was, you know, she wasn't going to make it past like 75, so, or 70 actually so we got to keep her for another six or seven years just from switching to that diet and um, in the book of Daniel King Nebuchadnezzar ordered young men um, that were without any physical defect that were handsome so they must have been firefighters um, that were handsome and that showed an aptitude for learning to be given a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table so you'll have to go back and read that if you don't know that story but Daniel along with Rackshack and Benny that's if you're a VeggieTales fan. If you're not a VeggieTales fan, you're just going to figure out who I'm talking about. But yeah, so Daniel, along with his buddies, were chosen, but Daniel refused to partake in the rich food and wine because it would defile his body. He and he talked one of the officials into letting them consume nothing but vegetables and water for 10 days. So, and the, the, the king's um, employee, man, was he nervous. He was so nervous because he was like, I'm going to get in all kinds of trouble because these guys are, everybody else is feasting on this wonderfully fabulous rich food and wine from the king's table and Daniel and his buds just wanted to eat vegetables and water and they the guy was I'm sure freaking out I'm sure freaking out but he went ahead and did it he went ahead and listened to Daniel and did it and so at the end of the 10 days of just vegetables and water not only were they healthier um, than the other than the other guys that were there. They even looked better. Okay, so I'm not saying that we all have to become vegan or vegetarian, but I can tell you from um, personal experience that packing your diet with more plants will make a difference in your gut. It makes my tummy feel better. It'll make a difference in your weight, and it will even make a difference in your skin. So I'm 53 years old. I only use powder. I'm not saying I have fabulous skin, but when I eat more plants, my skin, if I eat more plants and less meat, less um, protein, and especially less processed foods, my skin is actually better. So how do you build a meal or a snack around plants? Um, you can check your, let's see, and Marlene says she has no sound. So Marlene, you might try, um, do you have on headphones or um, do you have... I don't know. I don't know what to turn up your volume. <laughs> I mean, something simple like that. I don't know. Um, but 
Uh, you can check out your WW Weekly for this week to get some great ideas on how to get started, um, on how to plan, you know, how to plan those meals around that. So one of the things that they suggested in your weekly, and let me see, where is my weekly? This is what your weekly looked like this last week. I will say that um, today during the Zoom meeting, we were having trouble getting on to get the weekly printed out for this week. Um, so if you're having trouble going back and printed li printing last week's, I'm hoping they're going to get that fixed soon. Um, they were working on it. Um, you know, Trisha was, was working on it. She was talking to somebody in tech support, you know, and getting on there, you know, trying to get on it and get that fixed. So if you're having any trouble printing those out, hang tight. I promise pretty soon, you know, they, they will get that fixed because we all need to be able to print that out. But so some ways that you can be build some plant-based meals, build, you know, build around some, um, some, some plants for your meals or for even a snack or, you know, or for a week. Um, you could do it for one meal. You could do it for several meals. You could do it for a week. You could do it for a lifetime. So kind of some of the ways to get started. Um, we're going to talk about here in just a second, but stay tuned for the second half because we are going to talk a lot more about plant-based foods in the second half. Um, so first thing was chicks plus peas. That must equal chickpeas. So chickpeas are high in protein. They are extremely versatile. Um, chickpeas are not just for chicks anymore. You can make burgers with them. You can make hummus with them. Um, you can use them as a snack. You can roast them and use them as a snack. You can use them in a salad. Um, so chickpeas are good for lots of things, and they're good as a starter, like for a base, you know, for some recipes. Um, and you can throw them in, you know, so many different things. And and you know, on a couple of the plans, they are zero points. Um, using black bean swaps. So I know, me included, the first time that I heard somebody say that they had used black beans in a brownie recipe, I thought, what on earth? Black beans taste spicy and black beans taste like fajitas or tacos or you know something like that no they don't black beans only taste like that when you put those things with them so black beans you know don't wrinkle your nose up at me you know before you try them. my mom you know tried out all kinds of stuff like that on me um and the black beans and the brownies it works um it's, you know, you might, you just might want to try it sometime because the black beans really are good and you can use the, um, the black beans, um, you can use those in place of, you know, some of the oils or, you know, things to, to take, you know, take that and kind of lower the points. Lentils, schmentils. So lentils for the longest time, I thought I didn't like, so I didn't, I, I guess I was trying to eat them like peas, just lentils cooked by themselves on a spoon or something. I don't know. I guess that's how I was trying to eat them. But lentils added to soups and lentils added to some of the recipes. And I've seen them in uh, like meatloaf recipes and other things where they kind of bulk it up. Um, lentils, lentils are great for things like that. So remember when you're adding plant-based things, you don't have to just eat the vegetable, vegetable. And it's not just vegetables. So you don't have to. Oh, and Lynn says, Lynn says chickpeas and blondies are good. Ooh, that sounds good. I hadn't even thought about that. Um, but it doesn't just have to be it you know I mean you don't have to completely go off the meat you can add these things so the plant you know the hashtag bulk it up that we talk about all the time you can add some of these things to some of your um, to some of your other recipes and Michelle says she uses chickpeas for banana bread so Michelle tell us what you do do you smush them up or are you putting them in a food processor first explain how you use the chickpeas and the banana bread we're gonna have to know how to do this okay um, and let's see Barbara says chickpeas have something in them called Oh, it's zinc and it helps with C19. What is C19? You're going to tell us what that is too. Okay. Then mushrooms, they're what's for dinner. Mushrooms chopped up and added to other meats. So like meatloaf or added into hamburger meat or something like that can really, really, really bulk it up. And even people who think they don't like mushrooms, if you, if you do, if you chop them up, you know, kind of chop them up into that kind of ground hamburger, you know, texture, you know, or kind of the, you know, that consistency even know they won't even know and if you have never taken a portobello mushroom put some olive oil on it and grilled it oh my gosh there's a restaurant here in Knoxville that does the best job with portobello mushrooms making them into a hamburger and the first time that I ordered it I was really disappointed because I thought it was going to be a hamburger with a portobello mushroom on top well it was not it was a portobello mushroom grilled to be like it oh with COVID-19 sorry 
remember my brain, yeah, so Barbara and Lynn just reminded me that C-19 is COVID-19, sorry, my brain, y'all, remember, you have to forgive us because we have been, yeah, almost 14 days at the hospital and granny sitting, so, yeah, I'm not responsible for anything that I say or do right now, okay, sorry, didn't, didn't catch that one, okay, but anyway, so mushrooms, they do the best job of grilling mushrooms, so they taste, oh, except for Carol. Carol does not need to do this because she's allergic to mushrooms, so Carol, just ignore what we're talking about. Um, but uh, if you grill them, I mean, I'm serious. By the time you put on your tomato and lettuce and whatever else that you put on, um, on a hamburger, it tastes like a hamburger. I mean, it is the consistency. It tastes meaty. Um, I don't know, done properly, it's just hard, it's just hard to explain. Um, but mushrooms are awesome for that. And then the t ever talented tofu. So for those of you that are now going, oh, barf, we're not going to talk about tofu, are we? I love the way that WW described this. They said that tofu was a blank canvas. It really is. It is just a blank canvas waiting for you to add some kind of marinade for you to um, saute it in something, for you to add some other flavors to it. It is just, I, I don't know, I love tofu. Um, I'm so happy that my mom introduced me to it. There are actually places that I go on purpose to get to get tofu and I order tofu just because of the way they prepare it. It is literally a blank canvas just waiting to see what you're gonna do with it. And we have um, several recipes on, um, if you have an egg.com that include tofu. Um, we have, we'll, uh, we're gonna be working on, I promised one of the Sandys that I would look into making um, some hummus. I have to get a food processor because apparently I don't own, of all the things I have, apparently I do not own one of those. Um, but I, I told her that we would look into making some of that. And if we get any spare time, I will try to make you all a portobello mushroom hamburger um, in the next couple of weeks because we do have a grill over at Casey's. So those are some great ways to get started with plant-based things. And remember, you don't have to go um, you don't have to go all in. You know, you can make it one meal. You can just add some to a meal. Um, but, I mean, I really think it's a smart idea. I think it's really, really smart. Your homework for this week is hashtag plant-based power. P-L-A-N-T-B-A-S-E-D-P-O-W-E-R. And the reason I'm spelling it, if you all will do, if you will put hashtag plant-based power, if you'll put it in your homework when you do your post, I'm much more likely to see it because it will notify me that you have tagged, that you have tagged me in that. And I have some exciting news. So when you do your homework this week, so your again, your homework is hashtag plant-based power. What I want you to do is to, um, if you're brave enough, I want you to do an entire day of plant-based meals. But don't worry, if you're not brave enough, pick one meal, just pick one meal. And even if you just add something to it, or if you make um, plants the star of the show for that one meal, then I want you to post it and tag me for your homework um, to earn your next super cool badge. Thank you, Carol Lou, and thank you, Michelle, for posting that. Um, but to get your next super cool badge from Casey, which I have not seen yet. Thank you, Lynn. Um, but I have some exciting news. When you're tagging me on Instagram, tag at if you have an egg. It's just the at sign if you have an egg on Facebook, on this Facebook page, on the public page at if you have an egg in the Facebook group. So in our closed group, it's at Kelly Green Milligan. And if you have not joined our closed group yet, um, maybe we can get somebody, maybe Jessica, I don't know, maybe somebody will post the link to that. Remember to answer the three questions. I had like 12 people today asked to join. I can't let you in because you did not answer the questions. And please don't just put yes, yes, yes. That doesn't tell me anything. I need to know that you're real people. But here's the exciting news. Thanks to Orlando Debbie, and this was so easy, I should have been able to figure it out myself, but Thanks to Orlando Debbie, the, when you tag me in Connect Now, it is uh, at if you have an egg. So I'm no longer Scrap and Stamps 2. So everybody that has known me as Scrap and Stamp 2, nope, not anymore. So my, my Connect tag is now at if you have an egg, and I'm super excited about it. So that is your homework. Do your homework. Don't forget about it. Um, and sure, Carol, it can have, Carol says, can it have dairy or, um, or does it have to be vegan? No, it sure, it sure can. It can have it. And Sandra says it's time for water. It sure is time for water. So we are right at 830 and I have a lot to talk about in the second part. So I'm going to go ahead and get on my trusty apron, even though we are not making something until the very end. Um, let's see. Oh, yep. And Jessica has the, Jessica has the, um, 
link up for the Facebook group. Remember to answer the three questions though. And if you and seriously, if you just put yes, 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 I have to assume that you're a troll and that for some reason you want to be with us lovely ladies, but that you don't really need to be there. So I'm gonna drink my water real quick. Everybody else, grab some water. Even though I'm wet, I'm still thirsty. So give me just a second. Okay, and this is part two. This is part two of chat number 194, create a plant powered menu. I'm Kelly with if you have an egg.com. Today is Sunday, October the 11th. And if you were with us for the first half, thanks for staying. If you are just joining us for the second half, which by the way, Casey divides them up when she puts them on YouTube. So if you need to watch the whole thing, if you miss the whole thing and you want to watch it, you can watch the whole thing. If you just want to go back and listen to the second half, you certainly can. So when she posts those on Mondays, she divides them up. Jessica has been posting these, the written version of these on Monday afternoon, Tuesdays. Um, we have to wait until after Casey gets them on YouTube, but you can go back and read all this. And if we have any recipes, she's been posting them there on if you have an egg.com. So the second half, we're talking about plant based food power. So plants have much, much, much power. They have lots and lots and lots of power. If you missed the true tale of Daniel and his band of merry veggie men in the first half, you'll have to go back and watch it or read it if you're if you're doing this tomorrow um, th from the first half of tonight's chat. For the rest of you though, let's talk veggie time. So remember those guys looked better after after their after their 10 days of vegetables and water only. So whether you're trying to make this one plant-based meal or you're trying to fit some plants into your diet, or you've decided to jump onto the plant-based um, produce wagon, stay tuned. We're gonna talk about this. Um, my mom did a ton of research before she decided to um, become vegan, for, and she became vegan for health reasons. She did a ton of research, but we spent years, years of spending every single Saturday night together finding out what we really didn't know. So even though she did all this research, vegan um, was the diet that she was the diet that she decided to come up with for the, you know for those health reasons. But even after all the research that she did, uh, seriously, we spent years of Saturday nights together finding out what we did not know, and we needed to keep learning more. So that's what I'm going to talk to you all about in this second half. Um, the first thing people think: plant-based, vegan, vegetarian. What's going on? Why are there different names? You know, there's flexitarian, pescatarian. Um, ovo lacto, there's all these different names, you know, but what is plant, what is plant based? Because that's like the new buzzword right now. So what is a plant and what makes something plant based? You know, that might seem like a stupid question, um, but plants are not just vegetables. So a lot, many times when people hear somebody say vegetarian or vegan or plant based, and they think, oh great, you only eat vegetables and tofu. And I don't know why tofu always get lumped, gets lumped in with that, but it is absolutely not true. And um, while it is true that veggies are plants, the inclusion of fruits, nuts, beans, legumes, anything else that started life as a whole food um, that grew from the ground, usually from the ground, they don't always have to grow from the ground, you know, but most, most plants start in the ground. They can be grown in some other mediums, but for the most part, it's going to be a whole food that was grown from the ground. Um, uh, but, and while it's, that's, you know, plant, the mostly whole plants. So mostly things that started, you know, as a whole, um, I'm sorry, it started as a whole food that grew from the ground. Um, while plants may be added as an ingredient in another food, um, plant-based usually refers to things that are not altered too much or manipulated in such a way as to devalue the original plant. So I think that might be like where, don't quote me on this, but I think that might be like where that whole whatever diet came from, you know, because you're eating things that are, or haven't been and I hate to use the word defiled, but, you know, defiled or devalued, you know, like Daniel said, I don't want to defile my, I don't want to defile my body, you know, by eating the, you know, the other things because it's just been altered too much. So plant-based, you know, tends to lean more towards that. Um, and while, um, uh, if you can readily identify the plant, what it was or what it still is, then it has even more power. So the further it's processed or the further it's broken down, um, you know, the less that you can identify what it is, um, you know, it starts to lose some of its power. It doesn't mean that it's bad. And what we're going to have at the very end has been pureed. Um, but just the more whole that it is um, in a plant-based diet, you know, the better. So then people say, you know, yeah, but if I, okay, if I go plant-based, um, does that mean that I'm vegan? 
Absolutely not. So many vegans eat things that are not whole plants. So things like Oreos and French fries. Oreos and French fries um, are both vegan. They both can be, you know, and they both can be vegan because French fries are potatoes and they are deep fried in some form of vegetable oil. So they're vegan, you know, by definition, they are vegan. But plant, um, plant-based eating focuses more, again, more on the whole or minimally processed um, plant. So you, if you're going plant-based, Oreos and French fries are probably not going to be on the menu if you're going whole, all the way plant-based. Um, someone focusing on plant-based eating um, may choose to do that for a meal, or they may choose to do that for a whole day, or they may choose to do it for a lifetime. Um, and it can be for a myriad of reasons, but it's usually, um, it's usually you know, uh, health reasons or um, trying to feel better, trying to look a little better, trying to lose a little weight. A lot of people go plant-based for, you know, for health reasons. Um, and somebody that's focusing on that, you know, for the, for the day, for the meal, for the, you know, for the lifetime, whatever, they might still include uh, minimal amounts of dairy or meat. So I think it was Carol Lou that I asked if we, you know, when she did her homework, if she could, if it could include any dairy, yeah, it can. So people that are plant-based, they focus on plants, but they can still and may still include some dairy or meat. Vegan living means nothing that came from an animal. So no milk, no vegan, like actual vegan, strict vegan means no milk, no dairy, which is milk, no eggs, no honey, because honey is not a plant. Honey came from an animal. So that is, yeah, so that is no, none of that stuff. So you're not getting anything that came from an animal, even if the animal just worked to make it and it's not, um, uh, you're not consuming the animal. Does that make sense? So like milking a cow, you still wouldn't do that. The bee gathering honey, you st or gathering pollen to make honey, still wouldn't do that. So that's vegan. So vegans are much more, you know, rigid. It's usually more about the animals um, than it is the diet. And um, plant-based wasn't a thing with my mom. She still wouldn't have eaten any of it. She didn't eat honey. She still didn't. She, I mean, she had a strict vegan diet, strict vegan diet. Um, and hold on just a second. Uh... And while choosing a vegan lifestyle may benefit your health, a plant-based diet um, is all about gaining power and becoming healthier. So, okay, a plant-based diet. This is a this is a truth and it's true and false. So a lot of people think a plant-based diet is automatically going to be lower in WW My Way Smart Points. Hold up there just a minute, veg heads. It's not necessarily true. So my mom and I figured out um, real quick that you can still pack in a lot of calories, some good fats, um, and, but sometimes some weight with a plant-based diet. So remember Daniel's? Remember Daniel's diet? Um, he looked better and he definitely did not lose weight on that diet. So um, you, you got you to gotta kind of do, you know, do your research, ask some questions, um, Oh, no, I think that's a clock. Oh, she's, I'm sorry, Michelle said, is Dusty pecking in the background? No, I think it's just so quiet in here because the air is turned off that that's a clock. Um, or no, it may be me. That may be actually me on the countertop. Sorry, I'll stop doing that. Okay, anyway, um, so remember, Daniel did, definitely did not lose any diet, any weight. So being on a plant-based diet, you know, you still got to kind of keep it in, you know, keep it in track. I would still track um, your food because not all of them are zero points. Um, but he, yeah, Daniel definitely looked better when they got done. Um, some plant-based um, plant-based foods are considered high abuse foods, so like, um, and so they have a higher point value. So things like um, nuts and avocado are extremely good for you, um, but it's difficult to start start stop eating them once you get started. Um, but there are hundreds of plant-based foods that are no or low points on all three of the plans, on all three of them. Um, Speaking of avocado, I wanted to sneak in and show you all this real quick because we'll be focusing on plants a lot this week. Look what we just got in at Casey Kitchen Center, and I wish that I had time. I bought some lime specifically for this, but I wish that I had time. Um, to, I wish that I had time to get dig into these today. But as we are getting more into our plant-based things um, this week, and Loretta, we're going to talk about protein in a second. We are not done talking. But oh my goodness, look at these. We got food huggers in at Casey Kitchen Center. And these are actually on if you have an egg.com. You can, you can go to if you have an egg.com and go to shop and Kelly's recommendations, I think is what it says. 
but like this one you can use for an onion the other half of an apple you can use it for the top they have three different sizes and they hug the food and i'm sorry i don't have time to break them out and show them to you um tonight um but oh my goodness and like this one's for a lemon or a lime and um, you could use it for an onion and um, you know for something small uh, I saw I bought some limes just so I could try this. I know we're talking about plant-based things, but that one is a butter hugger. These are food huggers. And this one's for the avocado. Oh my goodness, it's just so cute. This one, when I have time to get an avocado, we will be trying because it is supposed to help keep it fresh, help keep the avocado fresh. Um, because avocados are a high abuse food and people tend to eat more of them. And then this one's just a different color of the multi- of the five piece multicolor anyway so we'll be talking about those a lot more a lot more but i wanted to show you those real quick while i was thinking about it because those are super cute and we just got those in and it actually irritates me that we have not had time to play with them yet but okay so um plants can't provide enough protein or other vitamins and nutrients okay who just said what about protein so that was a huge concern for my mom. It absolutely was not an issue until her final illness. Um, and that was just because she wasn't eating. That had nothing to do with the fact that she was vegan. But there at the end, she just wasn't eating. So she couldn't get enough of anything. It didn't matter whether she was vegan or not. She just was not getting enough food. Protein was a major concern for me. I asked her all the time, Mom, are you getting enough protein? Enough protein, enough protein, enough protein, enough protein. I mean, I was like, you know... That drove me crazy in the beginning because I was so concerned about that. I mean, this lady was, I don't know, five feet tall maybe and just teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny. Um, and I was just worried that she wasn't getting enough protein. So that was my major concern. I have, I'm including a chart. Jessica is going to include this chart in the written notes when she does them. So when she does the written chat, this chart will be in there. But this is a chart from Women's Day magazine. Um, uh, to, to help you determine how much protein that you should get in a day. So for an average woman, you would take your weight times 0.36, and that equals the number of grams of protein. So let's just as an example, let's say, let me just do some quick math here. So let's say if you weighed 150 pounds times 0.36, that would be 54. So you would need 54 grams of protein a day. Um, if you want to lose weight, and I thought this was interesting, if you want to lose weight, you take your weight times 0.7 grams of protein a day. Hmm. So even if you're still eating meat, if you want to lose weight, you need to up your protein to lose weight. Hmm. That's interesting. And then if you were just trying to gain muscle, it is your weight times 0.8 grams of protein a day. Okay, so... 54 grams of protein a day. So let's say you weigh 150 pounds and you need 54 grams of protein a day. Um, that was a big concern for me. So here are some of the, here are some, they're not, this is not all, but here are some of the best protein based places, some of the best places in plants to get protein. Um, edamame, which I know you all have all seen it. Um, edamame comes like a bean, but it has the little green, really, really bright beans pod you know inside the pod um edamame 18 grams of protein per cup so for one little cup of edamame it's 18 grams of protein um tempeh which is a form it's sort of like tofu but tempeh that's a whole nother discussion that we would have to get into will take too long we'll talk about it another day but tempeh for 16 grams of protein for three ounces which is about the size of a deck of cards or the palm of your hand um, tofu is eight, depending on the tofu, it's eight to 15 grams of protein um, per three ounces. So again, that's the size of a deck of cards or the palm of your hand. Lentils, nine grams per half of a cup. So this is a half of a cup, nine grams of protein per half a cup. Um, black beans, 7.6 grams per half of a cup. Lima beans, 7.3 grams per half of a cup. Peanuts, seven grams per fourth of a cup. And we're gonna talk about peanut powder here in just a second. Um, so peanuts is uh, seven grams per fourth of a cup or seven grams for two tablespoons of peanut butter. It's a lot of points though, but we're gonna talk about an alternative here in just a second. Um, wild rice, if you're still eating rice and if you're still enjoying that, six and a half grams of protein per cup. Chickpeas are six grams per half of a cup. 
um, almonds, six grams per fourth of a cup. That's not very, that's not very much, you know, but if you wanted, you know, to, to grab a six, quick six grams of protein, you know, a quarter of a cup of almonds would do it. Chia seeds, six grams per two tablespoons. So what we've been putting in the overnight oats is a teaspoon. It's a teaspoon, but chia seeds, and chia seeds do have points. If one teaspoon of chia seeds is one point, so a tablespoon would be three points. But, you know, that still would be a little bit of protein if you were doing the overnight oats, you know, in that. So that's chia seeds is six grams per two tablespoons. Let me breathe for a second because I'm talking too fast. Spinach, three grams of protein per half of a cup cooked. Avocado, remember we just talked about avocado that you could put in the cute little resealable food hugger. Um, but avocado, two grams of protein per half an item. So you could get one gram of protein, put the other gram of protein in this little food hugger and put it in the refrigerator and save it to the next day. Um, now, I said we would talk about a couple other things whole wheat pasta so if you're doing especially if you're doing purple whole wheat pasta you know a lot of us are including this and um, one cup dry of this particular whole wheat pasta has seven grams of protein and um, there are some uh, like Berea has a not whole wheat pasta that has that has um protein added to it but this one is just a regular old whole wheat rotini pasta um, and one cup dry of this um, is seven grams of protein. So that would be another great way to get it. Nutritional yeast, y'all know I talk about this all the time, all the time. So nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast is um, zero smart points, but it has five grams of protein. So, sorry. So if you just add one tablespoon of nutritional yeast to anything else that you're eating that's automatically five grams of protein so that's almost if you weighed 150 pounds that's almost a tenth of the protein that you need for the whole day in one tablespoon of nutritional yeast if you don't want to use a lot of points for peanut butter or for peanuts you can use peanut powder or this is almond powder because we are going to um oh and mindy says chia seeds three it's three smart points for two tablespoons. That's not bad. Three for two whole tablespoons. That's actually pretty good. Um, but peanut powder, or this is non, this, so this is unsweetened um, almond powder. Um, so for this, it is two tablespoons. Uh, two tablespoons of this, I think, was two points. I think it was a point per tablespoon. Let me look real quick because I forgot to write that down. That is one, I'm sorry, it's one point for two tablespoons, but for two tablespoons, there are six grams of protein. So you could either do one point of the powdered for six grams of protein, or you could do um, a fourth of a cup of peanuts or two tablespoons of peanut butter for a whole lot more for a whole lot more um, for seven grams of protein. Okay, so we're gonna make something with this here in just a few minutes. Okay, um, there are seven vitamins and nutrients that are not found in, that are not found in plants. So these are my only source of concern, you know, or things that you need to keep up with. Um, B12 can only be acquired through a supplement or for, for, through foods that are fortified with it. Um, the nutritional yeast that I talk about all the time does have B12 in it. It actually has 563% of your daily requirement of B12. So that is a great place to get that from. Um, let's see. Creatine is only found in animal sources, but it can be found in supplements. Um, carnosine is important, but it's considered not essential because your body can produce it. Vitamin D is critically important. It is critically important for your brain function and your mental health, but it's mainly found, I'm sorry, it's only um, found like in milk and milk products or sunlight or in foods that are fortified with it. So you would need to look for something with a vitamin D supplement. And you know what? I don't know if this has vitamin D in it or not. Oh, it, no, it's not even enough to 
to register. But oh well, it has lots of other good thing, good for you things in it. Um, so if you're in an area that you're not going to get a lot of sunlight to get um, to make your own vitamin D, you're going to need to find something with a supplement if you, you're going to do this like full time. Um, DHA is important for your brain function and mental health, but it's mainly found in fatty fish and fish oil unless you can take a supplement. Heme iron. So there's a difference between heme iron and non-heme iron, and I don't know what that difference is, but I have a heme iron deficiency, so I am slightly anemic, and my mom was too. So um, I have to be super careful since I don't eat a lot of meat. I have to be super careful and make sure that I get things that have enough heme iron in them. So I do take a supplement every day and the supplement works for me. I don't have any problems with it. There's no reason, you know, for me to switch from that. But I also get every day I have at least one tablespoon of this in something. Um, and that's a little bit of my, you know, my iron. So you can get that in, you know, you can get that in other ways. Uh, let's see. And then taurine is considered non-essential, but it can be found in, you know, some supplements. So people that are vegan or completely plant-based will be lower in some of these things, you know, than other people. Okay. And then, with, but with the exception of extreme situations um, where the food choices are narrow or where supplements are not available, a plant-based diet um, or, eat, or even the occasional meal or two, it can power your weight loss and your health. So don't get so, unless you're going to be extremely uh, narrow-minded in this, um, you know, in what you eat and just, you know, if you're going to make it into a plant-based diet, but you've just got a really, really small, you know, group of things that you're eating, you know, or if you just stop eating, you know, then other than that, you should be able to eat a big enough selection to get in everything that you need. So, we have just enough time to do the recipe that was in this last week's weekly. So the recipe that was in last week's weekly is pumpkin pie butter. And remember I kept I keep saying minimal, minimally processed, minimally processed, minimally processed. So we are gonna be using um, pureed pumpkin for this. That's pretty minimally processed. I mean, it's literally just pureed. Um, it hasn't had a lot of, you know, anything else done to it. It doesn't have anything added to it. It's literally just pureed pumpkin. So I can tell what this used to be. So remember, that's part of knowing if something is a, um, you know, plant-based that you can recognize what it still is or what it was. So pureed pumpkin, you can still tell that it was pumpkin. So this recipe, again, you can find it in last week's, um, you can find it in last, on last week's um, weekly. So what this is going to have in it is one can, it's a 15 ounce can of just pureed pumpkin. That is not pumpkin pie. Pumpkin is just pureed pumpkin. And then to that, we are gonna add um, a half of a cup of the unsweetened puree, of puree, of the unsweetened powdered almond butter. And there's nothing quite like trying to measure this out live in front of you all. So, cause I usually have all this stuff pre-measured, but I did not tonight. Okay, so we've got a half a cup of that. And this is, by the way, this is one point on blue, green, and purple. So that was a half a cup of the, of the um, powdered almond butter. It is two tablespoons of maple syrup, and I'm gonna use um, sugar-free. I, I like the carry sugar-free maple syrup, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna use that. Dusty, you are fine. There is nothing up here that smells like meat, buddy. Pretty sure you don't eat pumpkin. I don't know, actually, he does eat pumpkin. Maybe he's wearing that. But that's two tablespoons of the carry, um, I'm using carry sugar-free maple syrup. You can use whatever kind of maple syrup you want to. Then I need two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. Mm. You're okay. So I'm gonna do, I'm using the Dax um, pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice. So I need two teaspoons of that and that's just my Dax um, pumpkin spice. And then I need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mm. And remember this is in your weekly. So you can go back and print that out when the weeklies are working again. And then we need 
three fourths of a teaspoon of any kind of apple cider vinegar and I'm gonna use Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Ooh, sorry, my nose itches. So I'm not gonna measure that exactly. We're gonna get about three fourths of a teaspoon of that. And it also suggests a pinch of salt, but since I've not been putting salt in anything, I'm not doing it. Okay, and then they would prefer that you use a whisk. I apparently did not have a whisk here at work, so I'm just gonna quickly do this with a fork, and I can tell you it already smells fabulous. And I have purchased some whole wheat light English muffins to put this on for breakfast at work. So I'm still trying really, 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 really hard to do um, breakfast at work and lunch so that when we do go back over to John's mom's in the afternoon or if she's with me in the afternoon at work, that I don't go crazy. Okay, and this makes it the serving size is approximately two and a half tablespoons, which is plenty to put on the two halves of the English muffins. Um, and it is one point, again, it is one point blue, one point green, and one point purple. You do not have to cook this. You do need to put it in the refrigerator, however, after you get done with it. Oh, this smells so good. So after we get part of this in one of these little jars that I am going to leave here at work and not give to Dusty, who is begging for it. And let's see, Bernice says, what kind of almond powder? So the brand that I found at Kroger today says it's called Barney Butter, but it doesn't really matter what brand it is. That's just what brand that I had it. Oh, oh yeah. Orlando Debbie says that would be good mixed into non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Oh yeah, we will be trying that this week. That sounds so good. Okay, I have just a couple more minutes of your time before I have to go back to the real world. So let me get a little more of this packed in here. Looks like it would probably fill up two of these jars. So you know you could even make these for people and give them you know, give it for presents. But how cute is this? Sorry for the hideously loud noise. But how cute is this gonna be? Going into the refrigerator at work to have my pumpkin pie butter. Let me get a little taste of it. And thank you, WW, for this idea on this wonderful recipe. And Orlando Debbie, I'll definitely be trying it in some yogurt. Mm-hmm. Dusty has a reason to cry. That's delicious. Okay, so there you have it, pumpkin pie butter. Thank you, WW. I will be enjoying that this week. You all have an amazing week. Do not forget to do your homework. Um, it was hashtag something or the other, hashtag plant-based plant protein. But you all have a great week. I've enjoyed being with you again. Please do keep uh, my husband and his parents in your prayers. Oh, and yes, Sandra, that would be good in overnight oats. Um, they have another long, long, hard week ahead of them um, and some big decisions to make. So y'all have a great week. Um, I have loved being here with you again, and I will see you next time. Have a great week. Oh, if you're watching this on YouTube, do not forget to go ahead and watch the next video that's going to come up. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click down here on the subscribe button and remember to click that little bell so that it will notify you as we have new um as we have new um, videos come up. And um, over here, if you want one of these cool aprons or if you want one of our shirts that we've made, here's a link to the spread shirt. But again, y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. Good night.